My district here is pretty unique. We've got a lot of water. We're the farthest east you can get before you get to Louisiana. Today, Inman patrols Jasper County with Game Warden Ellis Powell. You know, as a game warden, you work by yourself quite a bit. So when you do have the chance to work with a partner, it's great. Over the last seven years, these partners have seen it all. I want to say it was early in the morning, in the middle of the week, two grown men sitting in a car, backed up in the woods at a boat ramp. Something's going on one way or another. And as soon as we walk up, they crack their windows and marijuana smoke just rolls out. One of the guys was from California, and he had $14,000 he had in cash. Absolutely fit the profile of somebody trafficking narcotics to a T. Ellis and I mesh well together. He's more up front, in your face, going at it where I'm sitting back maybe observing, looking through things, whatever it may be. Um, so, and it works great together. I think that's, uh, that's the way a good couple should be. <laughs> 275 miles west in Lago Vista, outside Austin, Texas game warden Chris Sanchez patrols the hill country. Being in a populated area, there is no telling what is going to happen on any given day. And that unknown is very intriguing. I'm going to stop just real quick. I forgot about something. I need to, before I overdo it, two seconds. There we go. I have heated up some lunch. It is a beef, bean, and cheese burrito that was frozen from the house. And in this particular case, I used my vehicle to heat it up. It's better than gas station food, and which sometimes, you know, we don't have a choice. I mean, we're always on the go, and eating like that is not very healthy. Oops, wait. Yes, sir. I've got a uh, situation. A deer injured while jumping a fence showed up on the homeowner's porch. I still have a lot of blood on my patio, which is obviously still bleeding. OK. Sanchez heads to the address and gets an update from the homeowners. She was on my back patio this morning, because okay. I was quite a ways away from her. She okay. wasn't running on one leg, though. OK. And then how many other deer am I going to have out there besides her? Yeah, there might be a dozen possible okay. over there. They search for the injured doe. Depending on what they find, Sanchez may need to make a tough decision. One of the disheartening things that we have to do on occasion is to diminish the suffering of wild animals. You know, even as a hunter, we don't enjoy taking the life of the resource. Game Warden Sanchez is also concerned about a fawn that was seen with the doe. It will need rescuing if its mother can't heal on her own. Watch out for the jackrabbit. Jackalope's going to come get us. Oops, he's got something. The homeowner spots what he thinks is the injured deer. Okay. Game Warden Sanchez checks to see if the doe has an injured leg. She's not showing any signs of distress. If, in fact, this is the end, OK, she's up. Not it. Fawn? This fawn is young, two to three weeks old. Um, still doing OK right now, but it's still nursing. So we need to go see the condition of the actual parent. Sanchez hopes the fawn will lead them to its injured mother. Psst, 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 psst. You can see another doe looking at me. We want to try and get in here just so we can see, and I can glass looking for that injury on that upper right shoulder. I got two doe looking at us. We don't want to spook them. They see us. They smell us. Uh, we're not their kind. So we're going to have to go nice and slow, nice and easy. Buck, not it. Buck, not it. Two doe, not it. Brad, I'm looking at the doe on the far left, a broadside quartering to us. I can't see that right leg. OK, so you would definitely see it. So then that's not it. Game Warden Sanchez sweeps the entire area, but doesn't see any sign of the injured doe. Maybe this deer is going to live and have a happy ending, and, and that fawn as well. 
Since the doe is able to move well enough to avoid detection, her leg will likely heal on its own. Appreciate you driving all the way over. That, and that's what we're here for. Outside of San Antonio, game warden Kevin Frazier prepares for a busy day out on the water. You ready to go to work, huh? You ready to go to work? Drug-sniffing dog Ruger joins the team for a day of boat patrol. All right, Ruger. You can't leave any hair in my boat, OK? After weeks of rain, a clear Saturday guarantees a busy day. Oh, it's on. It's going to be crazy busy. There's going to be a whole lot of people trying to do different things at one time in a small area. And it can be very dangerous. I've seen a whole lot of boat wrecks. I've seen a lot of drownings, lots of broken legs, broken arms, people boating while intoxicated. It could get pretty crazy pretty fast. And that's why we're out there. Wait, well, what's for supper, man? <laughs> what time? <laughs> All right, we may see you in a little while. Lighter. All right, first call of the day. Frazier gets a report of a reckless boat that's drawn multiple complaints. Well, we'll be looking for it. The drivers of the speedboat are described as a middle-aged couple who may be drinking. We've been having a lot of problems on this lake with some of these fast speedboats. There's no speed limit on the water, but there is reckless operation. So uh, we're going to go out and see if we can make contact. Y'all watch for that boat. They spot a speeding boat traveling too fast through a narrow channel. Hold on, man. Slow down. The game wardens catch up to a reckless boat, but it's not the one driven by the middle-aged couple. This guy driving this boat looks like he's a kid. All right, man. When you have blue lights on, you're supposed to slow down. You create a very dangerous situation for us. How old are you? 15. In Texas, boaters can drive a speedboat at age 13. OK, what's your parents' number? He's driving an $89,000 boat around like that. His parents need to know about that. This is Kevin Fraser, game warden. How are you, sir? Good. I have Drew out here in this nice boat. I'm going to send him home. I'm going to give him a one-time, lifetime break, OK? Fraser lets the boy go with a warning. All right, brother, head back to the house. The house? Yeah. I didn't want to ride a 15-year-old kid $1,000 worth of tickets. Better to give him a couple of warnings and an education, and hopefully next time he'll slow down for us. If not, we'll get him a ticket. The game wardens continue their search for the reckless boater, 